Hey guys, welcome back to the multiplayer checkers tutorial. Today, uh, we don't do something that is really apparent here. We do the movement of the checkers, but it's not really set. As you can see, we can go back and we can cheat a little bit. Um, but what we really do here is create a function that helps us select a piece and also just move it. There is a lot of stuff that goes into that, as weird as it seems, but um, that's what we do today, guys. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, so let's get right into it. We are going to actually um, have a look at where our cursor is today. So wherever our cursor is, we're going to get like a representation in a vector too. Say we're putting our cursor right um, right here, that would be the first style. So 0, 0. And then if we put it here, that would be 7, 7 since we're 0 base. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. We're just going to keep track of where our cursor is at all time. And I'm going to do this in the checkerboard. Now, um, to keep track of that, I will have a vector2 that I'll call mouse over. So private vector2, mouse over, and this is where our cursor is going to be. But every time we're going to be looking at this, it's going to be like a, uh, a full int number. We're not going to be taking a decimal out of this, so we're just really going to, we're going to snap on the actual tiles. And um, the way I'd like to do this, well, we have to do this in an update, of course, because this needs to be refreshed every frame. Let's start by creating an update function. But there's going to be a lot of stuff in the update later on, so what I'll do is actually split this in another function that I call update mouse over, something really simple like that. And we'll just call this directly from the update at all time. Now, um, let's go ahead and just type in a few things here. So let's just assume it is my turn. So if it's my turn to actually move, so say if you're the white player and it's the white turn, then what you're going to be doing is um, you are going to check, well, is there a camera first? Let's let's just do some uh, safety checks. So if camera.main does not exist, you can simply write it that way. So if there is no main camera, well, we're simply going to uh, debug.log something. Let's say it's debug.log and uh, unable to find main camera. Now, there's going to be a main camera. I'm not, I'm not even sure why I still do this check, but there's going to be a main camera because we create the scene and we know there's one, right? But in case uh, we just forget for some reason, in case we just reset the scene and we delete everything, then we got to make sure that we have a main camera before we go ahead and we just uh, try to run this. Then after this, we are going to declare a raycast it because that's what we're going to be using to actually check. We're going to be using our camera from our camera point of view, send a ray towards our input mouse position, and then it's simply just like an actual FPS. So you click somewhere in the screen and it goes, the ray shoots towards that actual ray, or that uh, mouse position at least. So the call is simple. We do a physics.raycast. And now the raycast, we get it from the camera itself. So camera.main screen point to ray. The screen point is input dot mouse position. And with this, we should now have the good raycast. Um, we store the value of that raycast inside of a field that we're going to call it. The length of the raycast, the max distance, let's go ahead and just say 25, uh, something safe. And then the layer mask is something we don't have, but we'll have to create really soon. So let's just call it layer mask dot get mask. And uh, we'll just call it board. Make sure you remember how you type this because it's going to be, um, you're going to have to type it somewhere else the same exact way. Actually, you know what? Let's actually do that right now. Let's go on our board. This guy here. Layer, add a layer, board. Save this, go back, and make sure it is actually enabled. So now, this board here is actually on the board layer. Good times. We can now go back here, and um, if we do manage to hit something, if our cursor was on top of the board, then we're going to say mouse over dot y is equal to um, it point dot x, but we're going to cast it as an int, so we have a whole value, we don't have like any decimal. So this is why we actually need to have a full value, and I don't know why I typed y here, it's actually mouse over x first, and then we do y. Uh, so mouse over y is going to equal int, and this time instead of putting uh, the point dot y, we put point dot z, because remember our board is on 
on the floor, it's not actually on the wall, so we gotta be using the z-axis for this one. However, for the mouse over, we'll leave that in a y since it's a, um, a vector 2. Else, if we're not able to just, uh, if we don't have anything, like if we don't actually hit something, let's go ahead and just reset that mouse over to minus 1. Therefore, we know if we're not mouse overing anything, then mouse over is going to equal minus 1 in both fields. Okay, so that's actually going to work, I believe. Um, we are going to just, in the, in the update, temporarily do a debug.log to know where exactly is our mouse over. So what's going to happen is we run the update, that's fine, it just checks that, and uh, if we're able to hit something, it stores it inside of the mouse over. Else, it's going to be minus 1 all the time. So right now it's mouse, uh, it's actually minus 1. If I mouse over this, nothing happens, and that is because I don't have an actual collision here. Let's put a box collider on that thing, and let's have a look if it actually fits. So, um, box collider, where is it? It's actually right here, and I can't seem to see it for some reason. Let me just uh, disable that. Oh, here it is. So I have a feeling this is actually too big, and that's why we don't see it. So um, the way my mesh is made, the way this board is made, is we have one tile is equal to one meter, and there should be eight of those. But there's also like a little thing here where it didn't really bother too much. I just um, added some kind of kind of bevel, you could say, and it's just not going to work with our collision. So if we're putting our mouse over here, then it's actually going to return us a bad value, and we don't want that. So what you're going to do is uh, take the box collider and just make sure the size is on 0, 0, 008 on each axis, except the Z one. Now this way it should actually fit perfectly fine. If we have a look at the um, only the collision mesh and the grid, as you can tell this is uh, actually 8 by 8, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and it fits perfectly on the axis, there's like no overlap. So that's what we're going to be using. Make sure it's actually the right size. Let me re-enable these. And uh, we should actually be good to go. And also, since I'm tired of just having this this habit of saving and not having a scene, I'm going to go ahead and just save the scene as game. And put everything back in the good folders. Why not? All right, so we cleaned up a little bit. That's good. That's always really good to do. Let's go back. And um, as you can tell, now we do get values. However, they're not going to be good values for us and simply just rotate that camera at the same time so we can actually see what's going on uh, while we play the game. Let me quickly raise that up to say um, 15 meters. Now make sure you don't go past 25 because 25 is uh, the actual, you know, that's the Raycast length. So just make sure you actually see your whole board, maybe even lower that to 10. Okay, that works. Now if I put my cursor up here, it says minus 3 and 3. That's not going to work. And the reason we have such uh, weird values is because we have an offset on the board. If you remember, we have like an actual offset. So what I'm going to do is just, um, when we actually set our mouse over, which is right here, we do hit that point at x. Let's do a minus board offset dot x as well. Same thing for the z here, and I'll just make sure to wrap these in between parentheses since we're casting and uh, we don't want any values to disappear, then we're just going to put that as a float, and then we cast that float as an int. Back in our game, we can now have a look at this, and hopefully we get the good values. So this is 0, 0, that's fine, this is 1, 0, sure, up to 7, 0, and that's 7, 7. So everything seems to be working here, let's go in the center, that's 4, 4, and that's 3, 3. Alright, so everything seems to be working here with the mouse over. I'll just go ahead and just remove that. I'll also remove this little comment here. I'll just put it somewhere else. But it seems to be good for the update mouse over. Let's move on to something else now. Um, let's actually try selecting a piece. That's going to be another um, big piece of work here. We are going to just create another function. Let me just do a private void. Select piece. Int x and int y. So let's just assume it's going to be something like if we press on the mouse button, we're going to take our mouse over and use that mouse over to feed the values for select pieces. So how exactly should we call this in a update? Well, first, in the update, this is where I wanted to have my comment. If it is, it is my turn. 
then if it is, I don't have the if statement just yet, but we'll find out a little bit later on. Um, if it is my turn, let's try to uh, select the piece. So if input dot get mouse button down zero, that's the left click. Then we go ahead and we just select the piece at X and Y. Now X and Y is going to be mouse over X and also mouse over Y, which I'm going to set as value up here. So int X, int mouse over X. And I'm just taking the same exact value we have in the mouse over, but I have to cast them first because in a vector, they were transferred back to a float, which is totally normal, but don't worry too much about that. X and Y, here we go. So if we press on that mouse button, um, then we go ahead and we just try to select a piece. Now, how do we go about selecting a piece? This one is going to be probably a little bit complicated. Let's start with out of bounds. So if we're out of bounds, out of bounds, which means if we're not in the, uh, you know, in the range of the, um, the array. So if X is smaller than zero, that means we can't go you, know, you can't have a minus one in an array. Now, if x is bigger or equal to eight, or we could be clean and say pieces dot blank here. Uh, if it's bigger than eight, uh, we still don't do this. And what else could we do? What other bounds? We should check the bounds on the um, on the y axis as well. So let's go ahead and do that. If y is smaller than zero, or y is bigger or equal than pieces dot length. Okay, if any of those is true. Then we simply return because we're out of bounds and we're not really supposed to select a piece that is outside of the board, right? Um, if that's the case, then let's actually try to find if there's a piece under our click. So wherever we put our mouse, is there actually a piece there? We'll do piece p is equal to pieces at index x and y, which is actually going to look in our um, in a, the actual array we set at the beginning when we instantiate. So if there is a piece, so if piece is not equal to null, then we are going to go ahead and just try to move it, or actually try to select it, we're not moving it. So how should we go about doing this? We should have another field. And the other field is going to be another private. So private piece selected piece. It's going to be useful to keep track of that one in other function as well. So um, let's do selected piece is equal to P. As simple as that. We just select it. And then what we need to know is uh, when we actually select that piece at first, since I want to, to have like a drag and drop mechanic, not just a click here and then you click there again, I want to be able to drag this. I also need to keep track where exactly the drag has started. This way I can actually tell, okay, so this piece was here at first and then we move towards that point. So I'll keep another vector three, uh, vector two, sorry, private vector two. This one is going to be start drag, and uh, eventually we'll also need another one. So destination drag or desk drag, or even better, end drag. Those are some crazy naming going on out here. So start drag is going to equal uh, mouse over in this case. Let's not complicate things too much. And uh, let's have a look if this works. So debug.log, I'm going to debug the name of that piece. So P, or actually selected piece, dot name. Okay, let's press play on that. And when I press here, I should get null. Actually, I should get something in the first place. That'd be even better. Or for some reason, I don't actually get anything. Oh, wait, I did get something here. So I'm clicking here, nothing. I'm clicking on a black piece, and it says a black piece. That's good. Same thing for white piece, so it does work, however, I do not get... Okay, that's why I don't get a debug, so if it's null, um, we just don't get the debug. So everything is working just fine then. Alright, so we have our piece selected, now let's go ahead and just go back in our update. Um, we select our piece, then if we actually release our mouse, right now you can tell, get mouse button down, so that's exactly when, um, when you start pressing, now if you release it, so input at get mouse button up, that means the drag is over. And at this point, let's do a try move. And I'll call this try move for multiple reasons that you'll see in a moment. Um, well, let me just explain really quick. Uh, try move is actually because you might actually fail, right? And um, what I'll send in try move 
is four different parameters. First, where we start and where we should actually end. But the reason I want this to have four parameters, I want to have the, like, the full information in there and not reuse my local variables, is because since we're going to be doing this as a multiplayer game, um, if I just do a try move and it's not my turn, say I'm just waiting for the other player to play, and then he does his move, that it works on his side for sure, but then um, and when it's actually trying to replicate that move on my side, then you know we don't really have a start drag value, we don't really have the mouse position that the other player had, and uh, we just need to send er every information in there because of the multiplayer support here. Um, so let's start. Try move, we're going to be using start drag, this is where we start dragging of course, and um, at the end start drag dot y. Okay, so that's for that's really just for local movement. When we are at the point where we have to do the um, you know the, the multiplayer movement, it's going to be called from somewhere else. So remember, this is if it's my turn. So okay, uh, start drag is where we start, and where we end is actually going to be x and y because that's where our mouse is. Right. Now we need to create that try move function. So I'll just go down here, do a private void, try move and do int x and int y. Oh, sorry, there's more to that. Uh, that's x1, that's y1, that's x2, and that's y2, which also stands for start position and also end position here. Now again, for multiplayer purpose here, I'll do a start drag is equal to new vector2, um, x and y, because I just need to redefine those values in case it's not your turn. But if it's your turn, they're gonna be, you know, they're gonna be the correct values here. So destination drag is gonna be x2 and y2. And of course, I named that wrong. That is actually n drag. All right, cool. So again, this is just to redefine um, the values if it's multiplayer. We also have to redefine one thing: the selected piece. So selected piece is going to equal our array of pieces at index x1 and y1. We have to redefine it because, like I said, if it's not your turn and you're just calling try move, then selected pieces is never really being defined anywhere. So this is only for multiplayer support, and I can't just I can't stress that enough. Okay, so the try move function there is going to be a lot of things in it, and uh, we have to do a lot of stuff, such as check if uh, we are out of bounds, check if we are out of bounds. We have to check, is there a selected pieces? Is there a selected piece? Uh, did it move? And all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of stuff to just cover here. And um, we'll start with that in the next episode. However, for this one, we should like to have like a movement going on. So we'll do a move piece using um, our selected piece, of course. And that piece is going at x2 and y2, a line that is going to be replaced eventually. And you know, just have a feel for it. So let's try and drag this piece over here. And it seems to work, however, you know, that's not exactly how we want it to work. You can go in like multiple direction. And that's definitely not going to cut it out eventually. And I just clicked somewhere else and just made my piece disappear. So there's a lot of bugs to fix. And that is something we're going to be doing uh, starting in the next episode. And then we can finally move on. Once we're done with the movement of this, we can go to actually implementing a server. So guys, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoy. I hope you learn anything. Remember that if you want to support me in whatever I do, you can always leave a like on the video. This helps out a lot. Leave a comment as well. Uh, or check out the Patreon page. Leave a like on the Facebook. All of those things, they help me make more tutorials. They help me make a course that we're about to have, a Unity course, for free. So basically, just everything is for free here. And uh, if you'd like to just drop a dime on the Patreon page, you can also do that. As always, thanks for watching, guys. And I will see you in the next episode.